Today's talk is called Faith in Its Right Place. And imagine, <laughs> imagine you know, those lyrics that he, he just sang, that I will be here, that, they're, they're, that voice within you that, of spirit, of love, of presence, always telling you, I will be here, you don't have to worry. You do not, you do not have to worry. You know, what I love about all my spiritual teachings is nowhere did it tell me that God needs me to worry. Not one place does it say, God needs me to be afraid. What does that tell me? I don't get points for worrying. I don't get points for losing sleep. I don't get points for my concerns. I'm still going to have them, but God doesn't need them. That's what I love. That's what I, when I came to Unity and found out I was good. And I found out I don't have to worry. It doesn't mean I won't. It means I don't have to. It doesn't mean I'm better or smarter if I worry. It doesn't mean that I will be more important to an organization if I fret. It doesn't mean I'm a better parent, spouse, child if I worry. Worry is misdirected faith. Faith in its right place. And so, all I have to do in my studies and my, and my practice is ask myself, where's my faith directed right now? If I'm having an argument in the car and no one's in the car with me, <laughs> where is my faith directed? Is my faith directed in what's wrong? My misperception, or is my faith directed in light? Is my faith directed in love? Is my faith directed in peace? What's reality and what is illusion? And if you do your studies, as I'm sure you do all week long, you know, uh, then you will know that reality is truth with a capital T. Truth with a capital T means there's nothing opposite it. That truth. Then there's mm, this. Where did we come up with all you know, the past couple of years? My truth. Well, my truth is... No, that's my opinion. My truth means nothing. My, in the grand scheme of things, my truth means nothing. I don't know if that's a new psychological term or a corporate term or what it is, but it's inaccurate. And it makes people think that their opinions are valid. My opinions are just my opinions. And it's fine that I have them, but let's not pretend that God agrees with them. My opinion, oh, this chair, my truth is this chair is fantastic. God has no awareness of this chair. God doesn't care about this chair. My truth is my, oh, this chair hurts my back. God couldn't care less. God doesn't care, which is tough for when we want to romanticize God. And we want God to care about us, and we want God to think about us. And we read books, and we read Christian books, and we even some new thought books that God wants. God wants this. God wants you to be happy. God cries. God, no, no, no. God is. God just is. God is love. I don't hear any tears in that. I don't hear any sadness or regrets. God is peace. God is joy. God is presence. God is life. And nowhere do I see God is concerned. I'm concerned because I have a faith directed in what could go wrong and what could be wrong about the world and what could be wrong about my life and what was wrong about my past. That's misdirected faith. And I battled with this throughout my whole, most of my childhood and my adult life. I battled with it because sometimes I'm very charmed by what I perceive as wrong. And I think I've got to get it fixed. Another term we use a lot is, I've got to figure it out. I've got to figure out how to pay these bills. I've got to figure out how to do this. I've got to figure out how to get a new place, an old place. I've got to figure out how to fix my past. I've got to figure out. And, and as I've been saying now for a couple of years on the pulpit, no, you won't ever figure it out. But in God, it is figured out. So seek the presence of God rather than the solution to your problem. Seek the presence of God. Seek the wisdom of God. Seek the peace of God. Seek the joy of God. And remember, God is just a word. 
that we use to describe what we cannot describe, to describe the bigness that is. We have agreed upon this word for now, G-O-D, God, and it is, a, it is a vibration that represents love in its vastness, in its infiniteness. It represents peace in peace's infiniteness. It represents presence in its infiniteness. So, so the, but we, we've, we've agreed to use the word God today, but not as a uh, personality, but, but as the very essence of life and living. The very essence of what we can experience while we are here in the world. But our teachers tell us, go ahead and be in the world, but, don't, but, but stop pretending you are the world. Stop pretending that the world has anything to offer you. It doesn't, except as a mirror of your thoughts, a mirror of your thinking. If I put my faith in the world, I'm always going to come up short. And that's, that scares some of us, because I want the world to be what I imagine it to be. And it isn't. Because you see, a meteor could come along right now and blow this place up. <clears throat> well, then I won't be so worried about uh, my job, will I? I won't, that wasn't a reflection on you. <laughs> I, just, I won't be so worried about money today, will I? <laughs> yes, I won't be so worried about my childhood and, and who disappointed me, will I? If I'm on fire, you know, and all, everyone I know and everything I know is on fire. I'm not going to be so worried about some of that other stuff, am I? I was talking to a friend the other day, and, and, I, and, and they were concerned about money, and I said, if several hundred thousand dollars just suddenly plopped into your lap, you might say, why was I so worried? I didn't need to worry. Here's the money that I've been worried about for weeks or months or years. You know, if several hundred thousands of a million dollars plopped in my lap today, that's like, what? Now, why was I worried? But you see, how can I have several hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars or more if I still have the thought, I don't have enough? I don't have enough. So it tells me I have to take what I have and ask God to tell me what it is. Ask Holy Spirit to tell me what it is. Because otherwise, I'm going to make it up. And always, I'm going to make it up in a limited realm. I'm going to make it up and put it in a box, and it's not enough. I was talking to a friend about the, about the difference. You say you have this amount of money, and it's it means this, and... And I said, and I have another friend who has had what many would consider tremendous success. Tremendous success. And when they had a million dollars in the bank, it wasn't nearly enough. You have hundreds in the bank, they had a million, not enough. What's the difference? It's the same gut crunchiness. It's the same gut uncomfortableness. There's not enough for me. And I, here, here's the thing about all that, as my teachers have taught me. If I think there's not enough money, what I really think is there's not enough love. And if I think there's not enough harmony, I think there's not enough love. And if I think there's not enough chairs, I think there's not enough love. And if I think the weather is against me, I think there's not enough love. And if I am thinking there's not enough of anything, what I really think is there's not enough love. That's, and I'm using symbols to represent the not enough love. And my faith says there's not enough love. And God being a yes entity, a yes essence says, yes, there's not enough love. That if that's what you want to believe, then you get to believe there's not enough love. It doesn't mean there's not enough love. It just means that is your experience. That is your faith. And all faith, all thought leads to a form. Every thought we have leads to form in some way. And so we will see our faith 
in front of us. We will see it demonstrated somewhere in front of us instantaneously if we're paying attention. I guarantee it has manifested in some way. Whether we're right or wrong in our judgments. Because wrong doesn't help, or right doesn't help us anymore either. Hmm. You know, ju just because I'm right that you wronged me, <laughs> I'm still in conflict. Still in conflict until I go to spirit and say, okay, what's my real thoughts? You know, what's really going on here? Because I need to see, because is, is it a theory or is it a scientific fact that as God is for me, nothing could be against me? Is that just a theory? Is that just something nice to talk about on Sunday morning, perhaps in a class, for those who show up at classes? No guilt. <laughs> uh, is it just a theory? Is it something nice to say? Or is it yours and my obligation as spiritual scientists to prove it? To prove it now. The Jesus Christ message, whether it's true or not, this event that, that the Bible says took place, it doesn't matter whether it's true because the myth still works. But in Jesus' ascension, he said, I will send you a comforter, a voice that will speak to you. Well, that to me is the Holy Spirit. It is that voice that communicates what God is to my egoic mind so that I may now practice from a highest place, so that my conscious mind may be transformed into an honest mind, a truth-filled mind. But I would have to direct my faith into such a thing. I would have to direct it over here, but it's not just some of the time. It's like saying, oh, I've forgiven almost everybody, the thing you've not forgiven everybody. You know, oh, I'm almost done with this. Oh, then you're not done with it. And we're not playing horseshoes here. We don't get points for lack. We don't get points for what's missing. No, we can be kind and we can be compassionate because God is not going to punish us if I'm not yet ready to awaken. God, God, God has no need for that. But it's available. And a question I ask every week of this Lessons in Truth class that I just taught, and I've asked it here on Sundays before, and it's not a question you answer to me. It's a question you answer to yourself. Are you here to expand your conscious mind? Yes. You don't have to answer it to me, and I haven't finished the question. <laughs> or are you here to make your misery more manageable? Are you here to get, use a few spiritual terms to get through a hard day, but to maintain the hard day? I still want my complaints. I, this thing I see wrong, I still want to see it as wrong, but I want to make it so I don't have to kill myself. I want to make it so I don't have to just scream and cry all day long, but it's okay if I scream and cry part of the day. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? But it's because that's true. Many, come, especially, come into new thoughts because they think they can get away with their stuff. They think they can maintain their old beliefs and their old ways and get away. Oh, because unity's so nice and it's hearts and flowers and everybody likes it and they hug and they have cake and they do all sorts of nice things. <laughs> but, but, and then one day, they get called on their stuff because when they leave here, they're still blasting their horn through traffic, and they're, and they're still fighting with the grocery store clerk, and they're still you know, doing this and their families and whatever. They're still having their old thoughts of how they are wronged by the world. And then they come in here. <sighs> and they get just enough of a dose to think they are spiritual. Not religious but I'm spiritual. Well, we'll be the judge of that. You know, we'll be the judge of whether or not you're spiritual. Just as you'll be the judge of whether or not I'm spiritual. I believe in spirituality. That does not make me spiritual. You'll observe how spiritual I am by, quite frankly, by how spiritual you are. Because I'm just a mirror. 
I'm just a mirror of what you believe about yourself. And if you don't like yourself, you're going to find a lot of flaws in me. And if you love yourself, you're going to find lovely things in me. You know, and, and, and it goes the same with each of you unto yourselves. And the funny thing is, in our faith, in our, if our faith is directed in God, we don't need our parents to change. We don't need our children to change. We don't need the grocery store clerk to change. We don't need the weather to change. We don't need anything in the world to change. I want to read you something here. It's a book I, I, I'm just loving right now. It's called Search for God, Books 1 and 2. And it's, it's an Edgar Casey. It comes from an Edgar Casey study group. And the beginning says, Faith is defined by Barnabas as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith knows that it has already received and acts accordingly. That goes either way. If, faith, if I have faith in my misery, it knows it has already received. And if I have faith in love, it knows it has already received. And acts accordingly. I love that. Doubting nothing. It is the builder of the seemingly impossible. It is that which has brought into manifestation all that has ever existed. In the material world, we, world, we often mistake confidence for faith. We are prone to depend upon our physical senses rather than our spiritual senses. I recommend that you listen to that voice within more than you listen to the weather report. We say we believe, but, <laughs> we believe, but, oh, of course, oh, God is so good, but, oh, I love you, but, oh, I ha we have an unconditional relationship, but, and there's always that little but or an and or so something that says, well, yes, but I'm still going to maintain my belief in duality. That, that's kind of where we get. Um, in, in the How Faith is Developed section, it says, faith is developed by the use of it. And so it takes daily, hourly practice, moment, momentarily practice, where direction of faith you know what, I, I know I believe what they say on Sunday. I know I believe what this book says. I know I believe it. I know I do, so I'm going to practice it. Even though it may seem like torture for a bit. For just a little bit, it may seem like torture to give up the words that no longer work for me, words like bad. It may seem like torture to give up the thoughts that you have been wronged. It may feel that way, but those are just sensations. Once you get used to it, you'll start to see the world in a new way. You will be a co-creator with spirit in perceiving, in perceiving correctly. Because then you'll see, oh, no one was against me. No one was ever against me. You mean to tell me I invested in this torture for so long? And it hasn't paid off. And some of us will not give up the torture because we're still waiting for it to pay off in love. And it never will. Our torturous thoughts will never pay off in love. Unless you get to finally, you just get to the bottom where it's like you have to choose between life and death. That's what I had to do years ago. I had to choose, okay, I've got to choose life because I keep choosing death. It's not making me happy. Let the mind be in us that was in Jesus the Christ. Then there will come faith that is sufficient unto every need. Even that faith which removes mountains, changes the destiny of nations, yes, and even brings worlds into existence. How may this be accomplished? By opening our hearts in meditation to the unseen forces that surround the throne of grace, beauty, and might, and at the same time by throwing about us the protection found in the thought of the Christ. And it says the Christ. It doesn't say in Jesus. It says the Christ. The Christ is the awakened mind. We can accomplish this. In times of trial, 
Let us think of the faith that has sustained others in troubles far greater than ours. Let us awaken our faith by rising above the, crisis, the cries of the flesh. Let us awaken our faith by rising above the cries of the flesh. Imagine that when, you're, when your senses are screaming out to be satisfied and you say, no, but I'm going to satisfy spirit right now. Oh, but I need another candy bar before I meditate. Mm -hmm. Meditate and then have the candy bar if you want. Sit and be quiet and then go have a drink if you want. Sit and be quiet and then go have an argument if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then go tell them what you think. But sit and be quiet first. First, you go to the kingdom. Do not try to heal the kingdom. The kingdom is just fine on its own, thank you. You screaming at a family member, at your spouse, before you go to the kingdom. Me screaming at a family member or a spouse or whatever, or the sky before I go to the kingdom, will not give me the kingdom. But I can use it if that's what I have done, because we're not here to have guilt over what we did yesterday or the day before. If that is what I've done, then that is what I will use to go to the kingdom now. I can use my entire past up to one minute ago or less to go to the kingdom now and say, okay, but if I decide... First I'm going to scream, and then I'm going to go to the kingdom. Really, what results do you expect? <laughs> what you're telling the kingdom is, I'll be with you in a minute. God, I'll be around to get you in a minute. But first, first I have to fix this world. First I have to have my say. Why do you have to have your say? Because you can't stand to be quiet. I understand this, believe me. But nonetheless, to, uh, yeah, but you don't know what they said to me. Yeah, but you don't, well... I don't care. And they don't care. I've been practicing this for months now. And most times, I'm winning. And I'm not doing it. I'm going to the kingdom. Okay, what's up here? Tell me the truth here. What's up here? And what would be the proper way to voice this? What would be the appropriate way, Spirit? What would be the loving way. And it doesn't mean everybody's going to agree. And it doesn't mean everybody's going to be nice. But it does mean you will have gone to spirit first. That's all. And on the last page it says, Our rewards are in proportion to the faith we exercise. According to your faith, be it with you. Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And so, to get that, I, I looked at, in Hebrews, I looked at the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, which is famous for faith is the substance of things hoped for, on um, the conviction of that which is not yet seen. And so, in Hebrews 11, I just highlighted a couple of things here, and it, in the, in the, it says, it is time for you to look honestly at where you place your faith. By the way, this is the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament, so it's not going to be your traditional Bible. If you're wondering, I don't know that Bible. That's why. Mm -hmm. um, it is time for you to look honestly at where your faith, or where you place your faith. It is through faith that your perception of the world changes. For as you place your faith in that which is not seen, that which is seen, changes to show you where you have put your faith. Hence, pick up this mountain and throw it into the ocean. Your faith can do that. Our faith moves mountains. Our faith, some people's faith can move spoons across the table, I mean, without touching them. In faith, your entire perception shall seem to change in answer to the faith you have given. In this way, the perception of death is also taken away. For as you no longer place your faith with sin and guilt, the wages of sin as perception is also taken away. By faith you will let go of illusion. Now by faith you listen to my every word. I ask you also to practice it in faith. Practice without faith is dead. For it is your faith that brings all things to you 
within perception. Through faith, perception is rearranged to answer the call of your awakening. As you ask for guidance and give faith that it will be given, guidance is that which will come. It shall lead you step by step, and not into form, but away from it. We hear that. It will lead you step by step, not into form, but away from form. For as you see the power of your faith, you are led to accept that the truth has always been true. By faith, you bless experience. By faith, experience blesses you. By faith, your willingness to let go is increased. By faith, you let go of the limits of the world. By faith, you bring all that is brought to you. As you learn this lesson, you shall giggle in acceptance and release it all in joy. For in the remembrance of truth, you shall no longer desire a distraction that hides the truth of what you are. The mind is one. The desire of the heart is only one. The spirit of God is one. And this is your holy truth. Accept in willingness all that you do know. And by faith, that which has never been true shall fully and joyously be yours. All by faith that is yours can be yours. We, each and every one of us here today, are worthy of the entire kingdom, not just a small piece of it. The entire kingdom of riches, but you're going to have to go within and find out what that kingdom entails. It is your job to go within and say, Spirit, what is the kingdom? They talk about it in church, and I don't really know what it is. I know it sounds like something nice. <laughs> go within. Go within. Go within. You will not heal your mind by changing the world. You will not heal your mind by changing me. You will not heal your mind by changing anyone in this room. You will not heal your life by fixing, fixing your parents or your children. You will not heal your life by getting more cash. You will not heal your life by anything other than going to the source of life. Are we clear on this? I cannot heal my life except by going to the source of my life. That's not my mother. And that's not my father. That is God. I must go to the source if I want to understand what it is. And so, go with it. Go with it. The whole kingdom, the whole, whole big doggone kingdom is available to us all the time. And all you have to do is ask. Congratulations. Mm -hmm.